the houses that covered our demonstration yesterday. Let me also thank all the protesters who came out in their numbers to make a huge statement to the Akufuado-led inept government that the good people of Ghana are not ready to accept the e-levy in any form or shape. I made the point yesterday that the only percentage that Ghanaians will accept for the e-levy is when it is reduced to 0.00%. Mm. Anything other than that is unacceptable. You're because, being a little unfair, aren't you? Uh, no, uh, it is not because uh, we, we are not. We are not. We are not because, because, because the point must be made, mm. Bella, that what the Akufado government needs is e-sense. And not okay, e no, that's, that's quite the e sense, the e refers to economics, so economic sense. They clearly have demonstrated that they lack the economic sense to manage the economy. And so, so, so when I say e sense, I'm not I'm, the president says that they've grown the economy. I think it's even in the pandemic, the economy is doing better in the pandemic than it ever <laughs> did. Do, do, doing better, but have you, have, you, have you taken a look at the because figures? The economy, which the GDP has which of the indicators? Which of, which, of the, which of the indicators? Bella, let's take a look at the economy. We, let's start with the debt to GDP ratio. As we are speaking, the debt to GDP ratio of Ghana is over 83 percent. All the cred credible rating agencies, all the analysts are predicting that looking at the way the Akufuado Baumia led administration are governing, by 2023-2024, Ghana may be headed for about 95 percent debt to GDP ratio. Not forgetting that in 2012, then candidate Akufuado, during the presidential debate, told the people of Ghana that if there is an economy where the debt to GDP ratio is more than 56%, it means that that economy is in crisis. Today, you brought the debt to GDP ratio from 56% to 83%, and you don't want us to accept that we're in crisis. It is not COVID, because prior to COVID, the economy was already in a mess. The debt to GDP ratio by 2019, before COVID came, was 78%. When they came to meet it at 56%, was there COVID in 2019? But there was a Why projection they, right before what, COVID that the economy was going to grow by some 9%. So, you see, like, talking about projection again, that vindicates our position that the growth trajectory that this government experienced from 2017 mm -hmm. cannot be attributed to their management of the economy. Bella, on the 2nd of November 2016, at the opening of the Accra Digital Center, mm. President John Dramani Mahama made a statement and projected that from 2017, Ghana's economy will grow by over 8%. When you look at the Economic Intelligence Unit, their prediction for the 2016 election, mm. and then their prediction on the economy, they stated that irrespective of who wins the 2016 elections, Ghana's economy will grow by over 8%. You know what accounts for that? Mm. In 2018 April, the Ghana Statistical Service mm -hmm. released a report on Ghana's economy. In that report, 80.4% of Ghana's growth was accounted for by the oil and gas sector. And you know what led to that? Yeah. The investment that the John Dramani Mahama administration made in the economy. Now, when President Mahama came into office, the NDC met only one oil well. Then we added the 10 field and the Sankofa field, which increased our production from an average of 90,000 barrels to 200,000 barrels a day. And so that is really what accounted for the growth in the economy. And so whether or not it was the CPP, PNC, any other party that had won the 2016 elections, because of the investment in the oil sector, we were expected to grow by over 8%. Mm. Again, when you look at the IMF report on Ghana's economy in 2019, it stated that for the past decade, and by, by past decade, they are referring to between 2009 and 2019, mm. Ghana's economy was among the fastest growing in the world. And in fact, in, in, in Africa, we were the fastest growing economy mm -hmm. almost for, almost, uh, for most part of that decade. Now, ask yourself, between 2009 and 2019, which government was in power. And the IMF predicted in 2019 that Ethiopia was likely to take over from Ghana as the fastest growing economy in Africa. Ethiopia, but for this civil war and their internal 
insecurity issues that they are facing would have overtaken Ghana by 2020 and 2021 long ago. Mm. So all these things point to the fact that the Dr. Baumia led economic management team have never been creative. They never made any sound economic policy that resulted for that growth trajectory because go How and take a look at that? all the budget. One district, one factory. What? I mean, <laughs> when, you, when the, you ask, where, they, where they the tell factories? The and I'm telling that. you that I'm telling you that if you are saying that you were you have established one district, one factories across the country, why is it that the moment you take the oil and gas sector out of the economic growth, you are experiencing negative growth? An economy that is resilient should have been able to withstand a pandemic like COVID. Again, COVID afforded this government a lot of briefing space. You got one billion from the IMF, 430 million from the World Bank, and several other grants and monies donated to you. All these things have been mismanaged. In five years, you have spent 342 billion, and you have nothing to show for it. And today, all of a sudden, from President Akufado to the least person in government, everybody is banking their hopes on E-Levy. E-Levy is nothing but plain tea free that the Akufuado government intends to steal your money. You cannot that you say are that they it intend is, to steal. Why it would they steal, steal your money? What because it doesn't belong to them. But, but they are using it, it to build the roads, end of the month, construct roads, if at the end of the jobs. month, you see, they're not stealing I, I will go into you. those figures as to even, even all the things that they are claiming that the E-Levy will do is very ridiculous. And when I hear their communicators and the ministers speak about it, very ridiculous. For example, I heard a Rose Minister say, if we get the E-Levy, they will be able to construct all the roads and all of that. Bella, like, as we speak, mm. government is owing contractors 4.5 billion contract, road contractors alone. Mm. You are expecting to raise 6.9 billion. And don't forget that the very day they announced their intentions to charge the E-Levy, the telcos have informed us that the mobile money transactions dropped drastically. It means that the figures on which they made their projections are now unrealistic, and so they cannot even raise the 6.9 billion. But let's grant it. Let's, no, let, but let's even, assume. even the Deputy Finance Minister came out and said there was a study that was conducted, and there will be a 24% drop in Great. transactions. However, within three months or so, all those people who might stop doing transactions by Momo will still come and, back. And, and so back to the point, I'm saying that, granted, granted that they even raised 7 billion from the E-Levy, 7 billion, more than what they are even projecting, granted. If you pay contractors, road contractors, 4.5 billion, a Greek minister tells us that if they, but for e levy, they cannot provide fertilizers for farmers. And budget for fertilizers is in excess of 2 billion. Mm. Education ministry tells us that, education ministry tells us that in order to improve infrastructure, build schools, and provide textbooks and all the things that are needed. We expect they, they, are, they are counting on the E-Levy. Health Ministry tells us that E-Levy to be able to build Agenda 111 and all of that. How much is the budget deficit? You are running a country with a budget deficit of over 13 billion, and you are banking all your hopes on a 6.9 billion that is never to be, and making it look as if but for E-Levy, this country cannot move forward. And again, they have been creating an erroneous impression as if Ghanaians are now going to start paying levies or taxes we already pay a lot of taxes they're just saying this is no, to widen the no. taxes so is that it, in, in, in order to number of the informal sector will also now pay uh taxes bella when dr baumia in august 2020 appeared on a, a radio station in accra and was asked whether or not they were considering the payment or the, the charging levies on mm. mobile money transactions he was very emphatic as head of the economic management team when he said that he does not believe that we should be taxing mobile money because taxing mobile money will impose hardship on the poor. Bella, this mobile money or e-levy will account for some people are calling it double taxation, but I think that in some instances, you may pay triple or even more. For example, Bella, at the end of the month, TV3 pays you. On a Saturday, you intend to have a transaction, you don't want to go to your bank, and so you use your mobile banking to withdraw money from your account. Mm. All the banks that I bank with, I know for a fact that when you withdraw money from your account into your mobile money, they already charge you a certain service charge. Mm -hmm. Now, when you withdraw the money into your account and you intend to send to your family elsewhere, don't forget that the telcos are already charging you a 1% for that transaction. And then in addition to that, government wants to charge you an additional 1.75. Now 1.5. 
whoever the, whoever you are sending the money to, I mean, the bill has not been withdrawn from parliament yet. So the discussion on the table is on 1.75. Whoever you are sending the money to goes to a mobile money vendor to go and withdraw. And don't forget, if you even send 200 Ghana cities, the person cannot withdraw the exact 200 Ghana cities because okay. even at the point of withdrawal, the person is still paying some more charges. And so the point is that this whole debate about e-levy and what it is intended for, the government clearly lack ideas. They are clueless. Okay. And so if you want to run the economy, look for people who can help you manage the economy better. The solution to the economic mess that we find ourselves in it's is not. never about e-levy. It's okay. about the government getting e-sense to be able to manage the resources right. that we have. Well, I remember that in the first uh, 100 days or so when the NPP took over from the NDC, there were some nuisance taxes that they cancelled. One of them was some levies that were even imposed on Kayaye. Yesterday, we saw Kayaye hit the streets and they are even protesting against government and against the e-levy. If we can just play back that video quickly that we played on Johnny's Bite so I can bring in Dennis Abadji to respond to some of the concerns that were raised by regular Ghanaians on the streets yesterday during the Yin Chia demonstration. If you have it, kindly play it for us. Demonstration. Yes, <laughs> Four years, Baba, on a baum lie, baum lie, Ankasa, baum lie, on one Cassania baum meow, baum lie, on Cassa ba, on my and to Yashi, and to your tat, Bande, or to meet you, I say, and to your tat, your compa, baum ya, why are you so not your new? And those are some Kaye also uh, sharing the opinion on the e-levy. She says that, well, she makes very little money because there's barely business now. And she has to send some to her mother in the village in the north. And so how much will she be left with if she has to pay tax on it? And how much will her mother even receive? Dennis, these are very genuine concerns. How did you feel yesterday about some of these concerns that were shared? Bella, let me say a very warm good morning to, to our cherished viewers and to the lawyer. Morning. And Congratulations to Edom. What for? For for staging that protest okay. yesterday. You know, it's it's very important that we become very receptive of of other people's opinions. You know, irrespective of how it's it's expressed. So long as there's no one that puts our country in in uh, under any threat. And I think that if we are going to have a lot more people express their views through democratically accepted you know forms like the ndc did yesterday and then that would be the way to go we we've all done it i i was i've been part of demonstrations since my university days at legon mm. i've done in fact i've been part of almost uh uh, close to about 23 demonstrations and okay. protests. Were you part of Occupy Ghana? Of Occupy Flagstaff House? No, I wasn't, I wasn't oh, there. Okay. But, the, but there are several other protests that you know, we're all part of. Okay. We were, we were in opposition. And I also know that demonstrations are one of the weapons mm. for opposition political parties. So it's, it's within their rights. And it's but this was easy. by concerned it's citizens, NDC. by the, by the way. Mean, it was not by any concerned citizens. It, it was, was a collaboration. We saw Bernard no, Mona CSO no. also Benamona there. Mona we saw the concerned students also protesting. Okay. I mean, I want to establish it. There's nothing wrong with the demonstration. But we shouldn't, in three days, say crock the John. We shouldn't try to be changed black into white. It was an NDC protest. It was spearheaded by my own brother, Giorgio Parado, mm. and his deputy. I mean, Adam and I, we share the same space. We, we know where it started. In collaboration no, with he started Justice by for putting, Ghana After they finished their meeting, he came to his Facebook wall to put up a post 
that if he gets 100 shares, he's going to, they are going to consider staging a protest. We know all these things. I, I, we are in the same space. You were there. You yes. heard all those And then he went back to Twitter. And then, and then, then later, shaking his head. And then later he came back <laughs> to his Facebook post wall with a screenshot of 100 shares, over 100 shares, and said, okay, exactly. And, and said, okay, so it's ready to, to go live. And then afterwards, instead of using the Adabaka NDC letterhead, they decided to use another letterhead signed by the National Youth Organizer of the NDC. You understand? Mm. I am here, you know, at the behest of the government, the new patriotic party. So can I simply say that whatever I'm saying, I'm saying as a consensus, would you take it as such? You would definitely see me as MPP and government because I have been brought here by MPP and government. Mm. The convenience of the demonstration, where NDC, all the people there were brought there under the umbrella of the National Democratic There Congress. was a collaboration with the Justice for Ghana. Did you see I the saw Ben line? and Mona there. Ben and Mona is a contract demonstrator. I How mean, do you say that? Oh, come on. Is there any protest in Ghana that Ben and Mona hasn't been part of? So let's put that aside. Ben and Mona is a known contract protester. But the fact is that's that... So how is that so? Oh. And I wish he was here to respond to this. You can, because you can, he, you can he, ask him later. He demonstrates against policies yes, that but, he does but not agree yes, with. But, but if you say saying. he's a contract demonstrator... Yes, what I'm saying is that he I is. I see what he's contracted to demonstrate oh, at no. any point, any given maybe, point maybe in time. Maybe I should get another word to replace yeah, contract. Because. But he's a serial. Let me put it that way. Okay. Serial demonstrator. Kufari okay. used to be a serial demonstrator. There is nothing wrong with that. I, I don't... I don't why are you dragging this? a contract demonstrator. You let me speak. There is nothing wrong with that. But... I just like us to stick to the fact and stand by what we represent. The protest yesterday was organized by the National Democratic Congress under the guise of concerned something something. It was staged by Edem Abana and his boss. Carry on. Okay. So that's that's a fact. Now moving on, I think that the issues that they raised are issues that they've been talking about and you know raising over and over again. They've raised it in the media space. The same issues are the issues that in Parliament their MPs are raising mm. and, and all of that. I, the, 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 at the same time, the government was also on a roadshow trying to have a conversation with concerned Ghanaians mm. in a town hall where concerned Ghanaians came into the town hall to also come and express their views and share ideas. Can we say that that is also an MPP? Yes. Because it was organized by so the that government. means that the people who attended no may have all been MPP. If that's so what if you're you saying, accept, if we're inferring if, from what no, you said no about problem at all. I have no worries at all. I have no worries. But at the end of the day, I am green, you are blue, you are yellow, we are Ghanaians. Our views matter, irrespective of which political party you belong to. But I, my point on that was that if you are blue, say you are blue. That's the point I wanted to make. Mm. Now, we have said that we believe that where we have gotten to as a nation, we need to begin to take concrete steps in becoming the Ghana beyond aid that we all aspire for. And it starts from somewhere. It starts from the point where you analyze the situation and ask yourself, how do you begin to gradually get yourself out of the clause of foreign funding and control? Mm. One of which we believe is the E-Levy. Nobody in this government has said anywhere that the E-Levy is going to solve all our problems. Yesterday, the finance minister reiterated this. Mm. The E-Levy has a bill. It has a law. And the law and the bill has stipulated clearly the background of the law, what the funds is going to do. Three main things. To hasten the road construction sector. Mm -hmm. And even that one, nobody has said it's going to fix all roads. Two to help in engineering entrepreneurship amongst the teeming unemployed youth that we have. Because we believe that the fastest path towards shifting this unemployment situation is when we create entrepreneurs, which will create a chain effect. Mm. Because if I employ one person in TV3, it's just one person. But if I get one more person to set up a TV3, that is maybe 100 or 50 more people going to be employed under TV3. Mm. That is a government mindset. And government believes that we must facilitate this entrepreneurship venture. And we believe that that is where we'll be able to raise the revenue to be able to do that. Again, the law says that one of the things that the fund is going to do is to support the development of the cyberspace mm. and the same electronic platforms that we believe everything is shifting towards to create safety and security for you and I who are using the platform. You know interoperability. Mm. That helps in me sending money from MTN to Vodafone. 
is built by the state, funded by the state. It was one of the things that NDC was going to spend almost about $3 billion on. So imagine if they had spent $3 billion on that. That alone was going to be three years of e-levy money to be able to use to actually get interoperability done based on the contract that they were signing. But where were they going to get the money from? Exactly. I'm asking you no, no, because so, you're saying because they wouldn't no. have introduced yeah, yeah, e-levy. So, so ultimately, they're probably going to borrow. Okay, ultimately, they are probably going to borrow. We have a country where we are 30 million people. And only 2 million are contributing to cater for the 30 million. So two things are happening. The 2 million are paying too much. And even the too much they are paying is not enough for the 30 million. In fact, if the 2 million contributors were contributing for just a population of 10 million people, we'll probably not have to worry. But even that 2 million is contested exactly. because the GRA came out with a statement about 6 million people who are actually paying income tax. But well, we keep drumming on that 2 million people well, to make it look like it's that bad. the finance minister and the state figure we have in parliament, okay, mm -hmm. in parliament, where we can rely on every data that, that we have in the state, is 2 million. It doesn't mean they can't get things wrong because the GRA is, is mandated with that job to I haven't the seen taxes. the GRA one. I know the finance... They put out a report, I know you didn't the see parliamentary it? report that says 2 million. That's what I know. I haven't seen the GRA one. So, so the point is that mm. we have few people contributing so much to try and cater for 30 million people, and yet it's not enough. Mm. At the same time, we have the traditional platforms where the state is generating revenue to cater for us, mm. shifting towards the digital space. And so you are able to probably cover just 2 million citizens, and yet we have over 20 million citizens on a certain digital platform transacting all form of activities that you have no space or no way mm. to, to tap into. It may get to a point, and the finance minister said yesterday that we may get to a point where if we don't take care, government sources of revenue would have shifted completely to digital and there's nothing to tap into. And so why don't we begin to have ways of going into that space so that we we'll widen the tax. This morning, I had to pay a mason that did some work for me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I gave the guy close to 15,000 Ghana cities, cash. The guy is paying zilch, zero, on work that he has done. And yet, Bella, you and I, who would also wake up in the morning and go to work and be paid, will be taxed. When you say he's paying zero, he zero. might also do some transaction and he'll pay. Where? But I also do tra the same transaction on the salary that I've, I've already been taxed income tax on and I pay on the same thing. The 15,000 CD that I've given to the guy, the only transaction is going to do is probably pay, buy <coughs> stuff. Mm. And your okay. argument is that, no, let me land. Okay. Land, okay. The only argue, your argument is that he's probably going to pay indirect taxes through the purchases of goods, right, and services. After I have been deducted my income tax, I am also going to pay indirect taxes. So the guy is actually not paying on the, on the money that he's earned for the work that he's done, and yet you and I alone contribute towards it. Not to and catch so, you. And so mm -hmm. government is saying that, listen, let's move into that space. <coughs> let everybody contribute just a little bit. Okay. But it's even going to be gradual. Okay, because as we speak now, we acknowledge that when we look at the data, and this time, not speculation, the data on the mobile money transactions, about 40% of the people are those who do about 100 cities or, or less. And I want, the, you to hold, I want you to hold on on this. We have Mr. Ben and Mona on the line, and um, he's been watching and wants to respond to that statement that was made by Dennis Elia. Good morning, Bernard. Good morning, Bernard. Thank you for joining us. Well... It is, it is sad that my kid brother will sit in the studio and make uninformed, disparaging remarks about me. Yeah. I have always, on principle, kicked against things that I think are inimical to the well-being of our society. And since 1995, when I started participating in mass actions in this country, my position has always been clear. Yes. And indeed, Bella, you will attest to the fact that if there is any one person that started the cries over the inimical consequences of the electronic thievery levy, then I did. Yes. On the 8th of December, I led the protest yes. to the Parliament House. Yes. Mm. I have been occupying the frontage of Parliament House for about seven days in two weeks. Mm. And I have consistently insisted that e levy is a fraud. e levy is TV. And I have told people how that will lead to the collapse of infant business. And above all, will impose a lot of hardship on the people of Ghana. 
If my action doesn't sit well with your political agenda, I'm sorry for you. In any case, if they want anybody who probably can be called a demonstration contractor, then you should be looking up to your godfather or your but, 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 president but, Akufado. Bernard, he, president he took Akufado back that word, by the way, and said... The athletes in this country cannot be counted. In fact, as part of his CV to becoming president, demonstrations have been number one. And so when I see here kid brothers like this coming to think that by opening their mouth and attacking people on the basis of their conviction and crediting you to another political party, I have been a member of the People's National Convention for how long? Bernard, but he, he did retract that statement and said... The People's National Convention became National Youth Organizer. Can you hear me? Contested about four different elections at parliamentary level, had become general secretary, chairman, and recently um, lost my position as chairman. Bernard, can you if hear me, please? For joining any political Hello? party. It will not take new weeks like they need to determine for me which political party okay. should belong. Okay, okay. All right. He retracted the word, by the way, and said, you know, he used that wrongly and that the right word would be serial and not contracted, um, you know, demonstrator. But thank you so much for, for no, calling I in. Think, I think Bernard, Please just land on this for me so I can bring Lord Jan to For end. me, it's completely needless. <laughs> it's completely needless. Whatever he has said now supports my point I made, that he's a serial demonstrator. Do you remember initially I was looking for the word... So he has given a long history of all the demonstrations and protests. Mm. So he's actually spoken to support the description that I've given to him. Okay. That yes, he is a serial demonstrator. And there is absolutely nothing. You know, when I started my conversation, I said, listen, <coughs> there is absolutely serious. nothing wrong with them. I have been part of 23 protests and demonstrations. Maybe Bernard Moda had done 60, 70. Mm. So I think his intervention is needless. He's only spoken okay. to support what I said. Let me bring lawyer in. L lawyer, yesterday, I mean, I'm sure you also monitored the demonstration against the E-Levy. And you have also stated that there's really no point for the E-Levy. I mean, what do you make of what happened yesterday? Bella, good morning. Good morning, good morning to my fellow uh, panelists. Demonstrations are a legal right for people to interact into if they want to. Mm. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate that <clears throat> we would class certain words for people who demonstrate. I don't think it is necessary. Persons demonstrate, the person has demonstrated. It's their right to demonstrate. Look, I'm not going to go into all the details. I've talked about it so many times. Mm -hmm. But the question I ask myself, what if the E-Levy doesn't yield the expected revenues. What are we going to do? Mm. Are we going to use that? And I heard the finance minister today indicate that under no circumstances are we going to the IMF. Mm -hmm. We should be very careful how we say certain things because it might not be engineered within. It could be engineered Without. without. But he so, says the consequences are dire, which is why they will not go to the which IMF consequence, regardless. The consequences are dire for us now. And if we are saying E-Levy, and we are not going to get the 6.9 or the 7 billion that we look for, what next? Look, Bella, I believe that with these town hall meetings, it's not only a discussion on E-Levy. Mm. It's a discussion on, so, if we don't get X amount of money, what would be the plan B? How are we going to make sure that we can still get the vehicle moving without the E-Levy? Look, one thing, that we sh one thing we should be very mindful of is the sectors we have here and which sectors we see as pushing Ghana's economy forward. The service sector mm. has been number one for quite some time. What is the service sector? Is it not consumption? Yeah. It's consumption. So if your econo economy is based on consumption, where is the revenue that is coming in to, to, to hold that consumption up? Yeah. The moment that falls, you have nothing to hold on to. Yeah. So what are we doing about that? How are we trying to move the economy in terms of revenue? away from consumption. It's, it's a challenge for us. And look, 
we talk about growth. Is it tagged to employment? All this growth that we talk about, has it created the necessary employment? There must be something wrong in there somewhere. Because in some countries, as growth is growing up, you see that uh, employment too is growing. Why is our employment stagnant? There are quite a number of questions we need to interrogate, and we need to interrogate as a country. I, I, I feel the town hall meetings are a, a, a good example for us to have national discussions mm. with regards to where the country is today and not hit left, right. MPP do their own, NDC do their own. In fact, they should invite people who we feel can contribute. Yesterday there was a, a, a meeting, an, economic, an yeah, economic for, meeting with yes, different um, uh, 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 stakeholders. Yes. That is the kind of town hall meeting I am looking for. Mm -hmm. Bring the economists in, bring the statisticians in, bring the businessmen in. Let's have the discussion and see whether e-levy is something that we can decide to reduce mm -hmm. to a certain percentage for a certain duration of time. Go back to looking at the toll booths again, because mm -hmm. for me, one of the things we could have done where tools are concerned, we're making about 79 million a 72, year. Yeah. 79, 72, 72 79 yeah, million a year. We could have said, okay, we would open more toll booths. Rather. Yes. But there are reasons why we shut down the toll booths. And what's the we reason? We're causing traffic. Oh, come on. It's a management okay. issue, isn't it? It's a management issue. How you manage the traffic. We could have, because of the situation we are in today, we could have said, we open more toll booths, we would increase the rate slightly and rake in revenue from there. We would look at e-levy. In as much as I feel it is, it is, I don't want to use the word, but it is something that you are going into people's personal wallets to take money out. Hmm. I, I think that is immoral. Okay. I think that is immoral. And I think... At these town hall meetings, government should be, be talking at us. Government should be talking with us, with us to see how best all of us can see where E-Levy will take us and the other things will take us. If we put E-Levy at a certain percentage, let's say if government came and said, look, okay, Ghanaians don't seem to like it, but we're in a very difficult situation. We would look at E-Levy between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. See where that takes us. And then probably, if we, we see that it is being progressive, we will come back to Ghanaians and say, these are the statistics with E-Levy. Mm. This is what we've been able to do with it. So let's consider it again. Let's slightly increase it. A gradual thing for people to be part and mm. parcel of government's decision. Mm. At this point, it doesn't seem so. At this point, government is saying to us, E-Levy or nothing. But NDC is also saying 0.00%, <laughs> and so they're not even willing to meet halfway because, I mean, clearly, if that were the case, government says, we've listened to you, we've reduced it to 1.5%. Let me give you an example, and I always like using domestic examples. I'm not sure whether you're married. No, If I'm you're not. not married, you have a boyfriend or, you know... I'm and, not supposed to and, confirm. And, no, you're not supposed to confirm. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you, and, and you have a quarrel. Let, okay, let's use, let's use married couples. You have a quarrel with your wife. Difficult quarrel. And for days, you don't seem to be talking to each other. Something will have to break somewhere. And the way you used to break that mold mm. would determine how you bring the discussion back on the table. And I believe government should take a different form. NDC people are Ghanaians, aren't they? Yeah. NDC people have contributed to the situation we are in today because they've been in power. Some of the things they did during their time, we are witnessing it today. So you change your style of communication and invite them in. Invite everybody in by the things that you say. And we put it on the table and we discuss it. But now that they have come out to say that within the first 100 days, if or when they assume power, they will cancel the e-levy, how do you even judge all? Have they cancelled anything that was brought when they went in power? Have they? 
They will increase it. Who, who have? And the MPP haven't cancelled anything that was anti-war that they brought in when the MPP came. Uh, the MPP came. And, and vice versa. It's, it's, uh, oh, please, don't let us even go there. Canceled. You Maybe use you use nuisance taxes to say we are going to add value and, and we all that. We've some, gone back to where we've we gone. Cancel. Listen, listen. We've gone back to where we correction are. We you some. said when you come you we won't use. Look, don't let us go into that. Yes. Then please, please don't let us go he into that. Yes, at the present, you, so at the present moment, What's we are in a particular situation. We need to get out of. It doesn't look. Moody's no no Bloomberg have brought a paper out. Fragile, five indebted African nations red flagged by top lender. Major risk seen in Ghana, Kenya, Angola, Ethiopia, and Zambia. Countries on precipice as era of cheap money draws to a close. Ghana is part of it. And they are saying mm. the values that are used in the budget are over-ambitious. That's what the report says. Yes, is. that's what the report is saying. Are over-ambitious. And at this point, one of the areas that Ghana needs to look at is IMF. And you see, they have their own way of nudging us into that frame. Mm. It started with Moody's. Mm. This one too will start. This one too will start. And what does that make that? It doesn't make your economy attractive to investors. But governments and have even contested even Moody's and their ratings. And they're saying that they're biased against African countries. Ah, so when they were clapping for us... Why didn't they say that that clapping they are clapping for us is not right? In this case, they say they presented them with all the details, okay. the documents, and Moody's overlooked all that we, and still gave we, us a low rating. We will see. <laughs> and you see, even though they've done that, who would investors listen to? Hmm. Will they listen to Ghana government or will they listen to Moody's? The key is getting investors in. And if investors feel international institutions like Moody's, Bloomberg, are saying Ghana is not investment uh, right, bring their money no matter what you say mm. and so we in our own look right now if these international institutions realize that we seem to be talking together and seem to be having consensus together in how we get out of the situation we are they would look at us again mm. but we don't seem to be doing that we are knocking heads it's not helping in fact what happened in parliament has even made it worse we have to get to that stage where we can all sit around the table and say A, B, C, D, E. We cannot do it on our own. It, it, it's shown that government cannot do this thing on their own. We need others to come in. We need Ghanaians to come. We need to sit around the table as a country to sort this particular problem out. So we need to cancel the um, town hall meetings and maybe look for one major stakeholder meeting? Like the St. Chi Economic even, Forum? Even, if, we, even, like if, that? even if we're not going to do that, this town hall meeting should involve others. Okay. Should involve economists, should involve lecturers, should involve businessmen. Let's have the discussion. It's a good place to have the discussion because Ghanaians are also in there listening. Okay. okay. Because after the town hall meetings, if you listen to the interviews of Ghanaians, a lot of them are saying we won't pay. They are trying to pull a mask over our face. And if today... The president has traveled with a private plane. It even spoils people's mind against, uh, what do you call it, E-Levy. I am not for the E-Levy because, first of all, I believe that it is morally wrong the way it's being done. Mm. I believe that the accountability issues haven't been uh, 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 discussed. It, I, I feel that the sincerity of it doesn't seem to come out. And it's a trust issue. Mm. I believe there is more to it than the way government is putting it. They should come out clearly mm. and tell us what the options are. If you go to these town hall meetings and they tell us, okay, if we don't do e-levy, these are some of the options we are looking at. However, these options would create one, two, three, four, for people to start thinking. Lawyer, there's a country representative of the IMF. He's Dr. Albert Tunamama. And he's been speaking and he says that the present state of Ghana's economy does not require an urgent economic program for the fund. So he is against us even wanting to go to IMF. Well, that he is, says we don't need it. That is his point. What does the Ghanaian feel today? But he works with the IMF. Okay, that's fine. If that is the way he feels, it's fine. How are we going to surmount the challenge if E-Levy doesn't work? If we don't get, look, let's say they've passed E-Levy and E-Levy doesn't bring in the required revenue. Mm. What's going to happen? 
we make it look as if we don't have any other kind of revenue. Look, one of the things I would have done hmm, this second term of the MPP government is to ban the export of bullion gold. You'd ban that? Yes. Okay. We would not export gold in bullion anymore. Anybody who wants to do gold should refine it here. Yeah. Cocoa that, beans. that would mean investing in a refinery. Whatever the case is. That it will cost us a lot. It will help us in the long term. We are not only looking at immediate. Also looking in the long term. So that in the long term we don't get to where we are today. But we've been told there's no do, money. Do, look, right now, if you were to give the private sector the chance to build a refinery, you don't, you don't think uh, they'll come in. You don't think the, even the legal mining firms in this country, because of the value of gold, they would invest? Don't you think so? Mm. We've been told as well that, I mean, and of course we know that the extractive sector, there's a lot of money that can be made from that point. But then there are lots of these foreign companies, mining companies, that do not pay taxes. So why, so why aren't we putting in mechanisms to get those taxes? Why aren't we? There's quite a lot of holes. Exemptions is one of them. Quite a lot of holes we can claw into and pull back. And you see, that's the thing Ghanaians want to see. All these holes, if we can plug them, and know at least every year we'll make X amount. We need a little more to add to it. And so if we're even going to do E-Levy, it's not going to be 1.75%. It's going to be probably 0. Point something percent. Look, VAT, what happened to VAT? Mm. The president, current president, he demonstrated against VAT. Yeah. VAT. People died during that demonstration. Did VAT not come in? Where is VAT today mm. in terms of its percentage? There is a psychological way of getting around people. And we are not using that psychological way. Okay. A gradual process, building up, bringing the people on board to understand what you're doing. And today we don't talk VAT, but we all pay. We all pay it. We is, all that, pay is that it. not what will eventually happen to E-Levy? Where, you know, we're all protesting now, but maybe later we'll get used to paying the E-Levy as well. I and we'll see the benefits of I, it I, in the long I, run. And it's a question of trust. Mm. It's a question of trust. If we get the E-Levy in, do we trust government enough to use the money for what they say they are going they to use it for? They have assured us. And they say we will even have the moral right to demand accountability. If so we let's have the, the moral right to demand accountability from the other things that have been spent that we don't know. Okay. Have they accounted for the COVID funds? Have they accounted for it? We heard from the health minister and he says that for the public accounts committee to ask him to come and answer questions, there needs to be a report from the Auditor General to the Public Accounts Committee mm. on COVID expenditure. That Why? is the right process. Why? And that's the only way he Why? will be able to go there and account Why? for it. Is he not a Ghanaian? Is he not a Ghanaian? But do is we he not, not follow is he not, Wait, wait, wait. We follow process. Can he not trigger that process? If Ghanaians are asking, can he not tell the Auditor General, trigger the process because we need to defend this? You're waiting for the Auditor General to come. And if the Auditor General doesn't come, you won't account to Ghanaians? Is that what we're saying? Ah, okay. I, I mean, Adam, at this point, you said that in the first 100 days you cancelled the E-Levy. But lawyer here says that maybe if the majority is able to find a way to George or with you, we can reach an agreement of some sort to at least try the E-Levy and see if it will be beneficial to us. What do you say? Well, our position remains the same that we only accept the e-levy at 0.0 percent you don't the, want to at least the, engage no, and deliberate on, on see, a way forward you see the the point must be made and must be made clearly that the ndc in the past few weeks has given the npp government a number of alternatives that we believe they can raise even more than 6.9 billion without imposing hardship on the good people of Ghana. Yeah, that would be part of the discussion, you know. That mm. would be part of the discussion. I, yes, discussion. Uh, so, so like, I'll, I'll get it. But we have given them those alternatives. But again, this needless I could town hall the meetings. I could the for you again. There this, are quite a this, number of them. These needless town hall meetings. Bella, I know policy formulation is never cast in stone. Mm. But where in the world do you have consultation coming after the policy is already formulated. That at the time you were thinking about introducing the E-Levy, 
you did no consultation, not even with the telcos, the people whose platform you will use to make these collections. It was after it was announced in Parliament, the telcos came out, denied knowledge, then government started engaging them. But they acknowledged that This is a that clueless, mistake, which is why they are visionless now. leadership. Bella, and I'm saying that nobody consults people after you formulate the policy. Consultation, stakeholder engagement is, is it's, it's a prerequisite mm. even before you begin the process. Understood, but I'm just so, saying that. So it's a sign, it's a uh -huh. reflection of the clueless leadership that we have in the Akufado government. Mm -hmm. Now, these town hall meetings that they are holding is just to explain to the good people of Ghana why they think that the e-levy is needed, that government needs to raise money, and then they are spewing all sorts of propaganda on these platforms. They are not even ready. Like lawyer said, it is not as if they are talking with the people, but they talking. organize the town halls talking at the people, mm. trying to tell them that this is what we want to do. Even before they began the town hall meetings, the finance minister announced that Per his research or survey, majority of Ghanaians have accepted the e-levy. Majority of Ghanaians. Who, who, who constitutes the majority? When they sit in their cabinet meetings in their family house and they talk among themselves and they look at... Do they do the, cabinet no, meetings in family house? No, but Akufado's family, <laughs> when the family, when Akufado's family alone hosts... But that's meeting, not a cabinet they, they, they meeting. They, will form, they can form cabinet. cabinet but meeting. he has a lot of his family members in cabinet. So they, they can actually form a quorum at their family meeting. But that's just by the way. The point is that... The finance minister told us that majority of Ghanaians have accepted the e levy And I asked myself, these people have lost touch with reality. Who are the majority of Ghanaians? Then now you are going around and backing on town halls, then you come back and say you want to reduce it to 1.5. So when it was at 1.75 that the majority accepted, why are you not sticking to it? But Adam, former President Mahama mm -hmm. penned, uh, we could call it a letter maybe to government, and he said that borrow a leaf from how we were able to control they the economy when see, things were bad. See, and and organize that, something see, like the Sage Economic Forum. So if lawyers are suggesting this and you're saying no, but we are not the town ready home meetings, to engage. The, the town home, no, we are ready That's to engage. That's going against what former I'm not, President We are not Mahama saying that we are not ready to engage. I, I, have, I stated that we are ready to engage. In fact, even before the cause for engagement. We started giving them alternatives. But in all of this engagement, I can tell you on authority, as a deputy national youth organizer of the NDC, I speak for my party, that at any of these engagements, the NDC will not propose e-levy as the alternative to the economic crisis that we find ourselves in. Mm. We have given them alternatives. He was asking me that we should name them. One, reduce expenditure. How do you allocate 3.1 billion to the Office of Government Machinery. And all we have to show for that is the president traveling on expensive private jets at a time that your presidential jet is functioning and other presidents find it worthy to use. The Liberian president, George Oponwia, uses your presidential jet. But the only president, Akufado, behaves like an Arab king who, who has fulfilled his childhood ambition of becoming president and so he wants to bat in the sky according to what your cabinet minister told us. And so you cannot use the presidential jet while your colleagues are using it. So reduce government expenditure at the Office of, the, uh, of Government Machinery from $3.1 We can make savings of at least $2 billion over there. And so then you take it out. Again, tax exemptions. Are you aware that under the Akufado administration, according to the IEA, we lose $5 billion to tax exemptions alone? And when you go and take a detailed look at these tax exemptions, very frivolous tax exemptions, including a $24 million tax exemption that was given to the president's brother-in-law to build a hotel. Do we have challenge in the hospitality industry? You that have facts on that, that is it. That is a fact. And what is even more painful is that that money is being taken from the Ghana Infrastructure Fund that the John Dramani Mahama administration introduced. Were you not given million tax dollars. exemptions when you were in power? $24 million. Dollars. Were you not given tax exemptions when We gave tax when exemptions to critical sectors, and that is why sectors like the pharmaceutical industry got some tax exemptions because at the time we wanted to build the local industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that all the private people that are building hotels, the president's in-law, brother-in-law, got a $24 million tax exemption. Now, reduce were the tax multinationals exemptions. multinationals that were getting tax exemptions under your under government the in the if, mining if sector under and the free all these other sectors under as well? The, Why did we not also zone. look at, so, you know, so, 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 desperate, so desperate times calls for desperate measures. Where we are today, 
we all admit that there is a crisis and for which reason they want to steal directly from our we e, e there, wallet and that is why we went to imf when no we went when and the ndc went so that that was the alternative the ndc thought at the time that <laughs> let me go and borrow one billion or let me go and get one billion from the imf mm. to solve the challenge now you say you don't want to go to the imf to solve the to to to, to, to get money we, are, we will not propose that you should go to the imf mm. but we are saying that at the time that the ndc went to the imf government expenditure at the office of government machinery was less than 1.5 billion at the time the ndc went to to to, to the imf the the, the the debt to gdp ratio was not over 83 percent okay at the time that the ndc went to imf we went because we were making good investment even in education let me tell you something bella mm. the npp administration has used free shs to blackmail everybody about their investment in education are you aware that we are at our lowest, all-time lowest, in terms of the, 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 the GDP, the allocation of the percentage of GDP to education. The UNESCO standard is that no country must allocate less than 4% of GDP to education. Mm. Today, the MPP administration, upon all the noise about these non-functioning free SHS, and they've introduced this traffic light, Today, our siblings that are in secondary school, they go to school two weeks later, you have to go green, red, go whatever track. Their investment in education is 3.1%. This country, this is the all-time lowest. Under the NDC, the list was 4.5%. These are facts. Check from UNESCO, check from all okay. the records. And so, the point is that at the time that the NDC even went to the IMF, we were making critical investment into the economy. Mm. But you are on a spending spree, a government that is so insensitive that at the time Ghanaians are complaining about e-levy, the only response they have for us is for the majority leader to cut an e-cake and spite in our face and tell us that we well, don't care what you are doing. Well, majority leader has come out. He's spoken. He says that no, the cake was said, given to him by a businessman, Bella, by the way. If you but, are celebrating your birthday and I give you an atomic bomb, will you put it on display? If okay. you are celebrating your birthday and I give how you acid, how do we guarantee? If I give you poison, will you serve it at your party? How do we guarantee and trust that the NDC will actually cancel the e-levy? If you come into power, but and I'm, that's I'm the asking only. You, I'm asking, I'll, no, I'll come we are moving from that, and that's that. the only fund that is supporting the economy at that moment. But, how can we trust that you can? How can the e-levy? Well, that's be the impression can we've been given. How can the e-levy be the only fund? We need the e-levy, otherwise the economy will crash. And I'm saying that the government doesn't need e-levy, and this is we must be telling them. But how do we trust that you do Back that? Back to you the cake. I will come there. I will come there. But let me finish with the cake. At the time when you objected the Bella, CST, I want to deal you with did the not cake. cancel it. I want to deal with the how cake. How do we trust I want to deal with the e -cake. that you will cancel it? And I'm saying, Nabella, the, ma the majority leader is not, is not a child. Forgive me to say this. He's not a child. If you are celebrating your birthday and I give you poison, will you serve it at the party? Point so noted. The, Please so answer my question So the point is me. that that is the government that we have in place. They look at us, insult us, and decide that, oh, you are complaining about e levy. We don't care. And the, the only way. They haven't said they don't celebrate. care. That's why they're going around the town hall meetings. That, 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 that is explain. a level of. But how do we trust? And they land on this for me so I can bring them in. My time is up. How the do we NDC, trust that you would actually cancel the, NDC, the e levy the NDC, in the first 100 said, days? We have said that we will not accept the e levy. We will not accept the e levy. Granted, that the recalcitrant Akufuado government goes ahead to find their way and, and use Takashi or whatever in parliament to approve it. My general secretary has said, and President Mahama has indicated that we will cancel because we believe that it is not a tax that, okay. that, that, that Ghanaians Even if that's what's holding paying. the economy around it, that it, time. It cannot be. Okay. It, it cannot be the then tax that should be holding the economy. 6.9 billion. I Goodness. That, I pray that after he's walked around really confusing everybody, I, I, I get a time to, to, to deal with the issues. Because, I mean, I mean, listening to a lawyer and them, I'm still trying to really wrap my, my head around. So, what is the NDC's alternative? You know, he still went around and was... But really he's mentioned a few. Mentioned, no, no. And I remember he's that... You, 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 asked, you threw all those questions Anabos back. Samuel, you threw all those questions also, back. Regardless, you threw all those questions back. Anabos Samuel Kujetua Black so also listed nine IMF, other areas that we so can raise over 6.9 billion dollars. You threw the question back to him that when they went to IMF, why didn't they cut the government machinery from 1.3 billion or whatever to, to 600,000? Why didn't they cut it to 400,000? I didn't ask that question, by the no, way. I am, I was so asking, I'm asking about him. the so tax I'm exemptions. So, so I'm asking him. Why did they cut it down? You see, the NDC go around lying, plain lies on truth, and they, they expect that Ghanaians would take it hook, line, sinker. Number one, the Office of Government Machinery, if you pick the budget, is made up of the following. 
Public Enterprises Commission, the Scholarship Secretariat, the MASWOC, the Nations Builders Corps, the National Identification Authority, the Zongo Development Fund, the Infrastructure of Poverty and Eradication Program, what we call the $1 million one constituency. Did the we home, even get those? The home <laughs> rental scheme, please let me speak. The home <laughs> rental scheme and the Council of State. So you see... Did the constituencies even get yes, development up yes. to a $1 million? Yes, if you go to the middle belt, yes, I have the figures here. If you give me time... If we go to the middle belt... Give me 15 minutes, I can... What about you, the southern belt? It is what there, about? the coastal development areas. So I have the figures here. Up to $1 million? Dollars. Yes, in my constituency, is there. In every constituency, there have been more than $1 million. You see, wow. so if you are saying that there is a certain amount allocated to government machinery, and then quickly... You run and mention president traveling on a private jet. You are deceiving Ghanaians just as you did in 2008. Because you are saying that we should remove scholarship secretariat, which you, co you completely collapsed it under your tenor. Oh, it is under this government. He that says reduce it the cost. It is under this government. Are we still we giving the one million per constituency? I remember that that was under the special development ministry. And the president gave us a reason why they shut down those ministries. Because he said they had achieved their mandate. Are we still holding on to that? The scholarship secretary never collapsed. In fact, the most viable scholarship that is running there. Please, What's an NDC please. Initiative, the Hungarian scholarship. Dennis, Why do you want to you tell us? I was lies? asking, are we still Why giving the one million dollars? I don't make statements Adam, please, that are not please, true. I don't have time. We'll be cut off. So, so, so are we still giving the one million, one, dollar, well, one million dollar per constituency? Yes. We're still doing because that. Because the projects are it running. Has, it has never been given. It is never given. Never. Can you let him since 2017 speak? Bella, it has never given. It's what is not telling any lies. Please. Otherwise, lawyers will not get to speak and we'll have to make a decision. But I will be able to speak. One million. No, that's what I'm saying. You see, they started playing with you. Dennis, please. Land for me. I will, I will not land because you I have been spoken. Land. He spoke for 10 minutes. No, but no, 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 no Dennis, I'm sorry. Carry on because no our time is up. Since 2017. Adam, please, can we kill his so microphone? It is a Thank complete you. lie. Amen. It is a complete lie, consistent <laughs> lie that the NDC and Adam has tried to even do this morning. That in the, uh, the, in the budget, under Office of Government Machinery, it is not for the consumption of the president. The scholarship that we have given to 40,000 students in this country under this government. The IPA projects, the one million dollar one constituency projects that are going on, the astrotypes you see, the projects going on in the Zongos under the Zongo Development Fund, all those things are under Office of Government Machinery, the National Identification Card that today has become e passport, which they couldn't implement. Foreign that Affairs says that that's, that directive didn't come go, from their office. Yes, but it's from the office of the vice president and it is effective. Go to the National Identification Authority today. The cut that you are holding is under Office of the Government Machinery. Is the so president say, spending fifteen thousand pounds no, an hour me, I will on not respond private jets? Go to you parliament. Will not I will not respond. What I am dealing with Daniels is a are complete. Asking you. What I am dealing with this morning is a complete falsehood and consistent untruth, which I am telling you today okay. on this set that okay. it is never true that there is a certain amount allocated for the president's consumption in the okay. budget, and that under Office of Government Machinery. If the NDC are saying that we should cut it, then they are asking us to cut the scholarship secretary, okay. to cut the IPEP project, okay. to Point cut well the Zongo, made. Zongo I'm sorry, we don't have time. Zongo Lawyer, Zongo final words, please. Time. Lawyer, final words. And oh. these things, usually when they Dennis, come up with, thank I you. expect that you Lawyer. have the budget in front of you. Lawyer, you final words. Him. You can't tell me how to do my you job, please. Him. Lawyer, final words. Of all the things that have been said around this table, are the people feeling it? Yes, that, is, the that is the end point. Are the people feeling it? Do the people feel government has handled the economy well enough for them to be comfortable? Okay. And from the look of things, it doesn't look so. It doesn't look so. Thank you so much. Lawyer Kwame Jantua is the chairman of oil and gas sector of the AGI. Eric Edem Agbana, uh, deputy national youth organizer of the NDC. And <laughs> Dennis Miracles Abwaje is uh, a former MC of Ikiapim North. A big thank you to Sheila Bonsu for styling me every day. Every Friday, actually, on the show. We're back with some more entertainment, sports, Johnny Cookie, and so much more right here on the show. Keep watching.